going on guys? So rather than apologizing a thousand and four times like I should for not uploading lately, uh, I figured I would just toss up this underused match against my boy Ryan here. So basically, I put together a pretty neat little team here. <laughs> um, it's actually been working out pretty nicely lately. Uh, they have some pretty good energy together. You've seen the Raikou, and I got a couple new members on that team. So basically, Ryan's got a, a pretty scary team over there. I'm really afraid of the Jirachi. Those, there's going to be so many different kinds of Jirachis these days, they could fuck you up. But uh, also, I'm afraid of the unburdened Hitmonlee. That thing's going to be able to outspeed my shit once he gets his fake out and all that kind of action. Also, Paul is, you know, a little bit of a, of a threat to me. I have to keep the Raikou around to be able to take care of that thing. Um, he also has a Crobat, which is scary, another Raikou of his own, and a Porygon too. So, this should be pretty interesting. Ryan's got a pretty well-built team here. So, uh, let's see how this goes. So, by the looks of his team, my best guess for his lead was going to be Crobat, so I actually let off with my Raikou, and as it turns out, he leads off with his Porygon too. So, that's actually completely fine by me, because Wildcat can get a <laughs> very hard hitting Specs Thunderbolt if I do feel like staying in and going for that, but I figured maybe he was going to want to switch. I just go for the Volt Switch, um, as it's going to hit that Porygon too for a decent amount of damage, and I was like, alright Raikou. That's my boy right there. So, I'm gonna go into Real Steel now. I'm um, trying to really steal this uh, Porygon's bitch. You know what I'm saying? Real Steel does that shit. He, uh, he's gonna hit me with a Tri Attack, which is perfectly fine by me. Do not get any of the status conditions, and that is cool. So, I know that this Porygon has absolutely nothing to do to me. He can't Toxic me. If he wants to Thunder Wave me, fine. I'm a big ass. Iron Ball. You know, one time I got tricked an Iron Ball onto my Registeel, and I was like, I'm already an Iron Ball. This, this is like motherfucking Iron Ballception out here. But uh, I don't know why I just thought of that. Anyways, he's gonna. He has this Jirachi out here, and uh, I actually decided to stay in because I knew Jirachi couldn't really hurt me, and I also wanted to scout out what kind of Jirachi this was gonna be. Um, shows me that he has a trick. Choice Band Jirachi. That is pretty interesting. He tricks the uh, Choice Band onto my Registeel, and as I go for the uh, the Thunder Wave, which is gonna be you know make that Jirachi a little bit easier to kill later on. So yeah, now I'm Choice Banded on Registeel, which is completely fine because I already got my rocks up. Basically, I'm gonna be hitting hard with Earthquakes from now on, so that's fun. Um, I bring out my Infernape. He actually stays in, thinking I was gonna go over predict, maybe go for the U-turn or something like that. But Caesar decided he did not want to hit any attacks today, so that Jirachi is gonna live to see another day, and uh. Paul Sr. is going to come out here to ruin Infernape's day, pretty much. You know, not really. Technically, I can actually just U-turn out and get a decent amount of damage. So it's not too big of a deal, but yeah, you know, whatever. So <laughs> I'm going to go for the U-turn here. Could have killed that Jirachi. Infernape's looking a little bit pissed about that. And uh, sorry about that, Caesar. By the way, has anybody seen the new Planet of the Apes movie? That shit was fucking intense. I was I was all about it. That's why I'm nicknamed my Infernape Caesar, because Caesar's a fucking badass. So, I was thinking about it for a while. This Slowbro's not going to want to go for the water move straight off the bat of my Infernape in case I switch. So, I predict the Thunderbolt, or Thunder Wave, as I bring in Raikou, and that actually works out very nicely, as uh, I'm unable to be paralyzed, and now he's going to have to switch out, meaning I'm going to get a free uh, Volt Switch off on this Jirachi. Which is very nice. Actually, do I go for the yeah? I go for the I go for the Volt Switch here, as that's pretty nice for me because now I can get a decent amount of damage off on that thing, and then get the matchup that I like against this guy. So we are uh, we're looking pretty solid here. I actually decided to bring out Real Steel here because I thought it would be hilarious to kill this guy um, with his own Choice Band with an Earthquake. That would be that'd be pretty much hilarious. But uh, as you'll see, he saw that coming definitely, and is able to switch into his Crobat, who is not going to be uh, taking any damage from that Earthquake anytime soon. Unless he gets fucking tired of flapping over there and has to take a rest on the ground real quick, that would actually hurt him, you know? There should be times where flying Pokemon have to sit on the ground real quick, and then if you get like an Earthquake off on at the right time, it works, but you know, who knows. He goes for the Super Fang as I bring out my Disco Balls, which is a nice play on his part, because it's going to knock me to about half, as um, that actually does also still show me that he is a physical attacking Crobat. Um, or at least I was kind of banking on the fact that he was going to be physical attacking, as he shows me here that he is with the Brave Bird. I knew I could live that with a little bit of HP, and um, that allows me to get a Will-O-Wisp off on this this uh, pink Batman looking bastard. So that's pretty cool. Crobat's no longer really a threat to me anymore, and um, that's really nice because this team is kind of scared of things that are really fast. So that's also a main problem with... Uh, with Sticky Web. This Sticky Web also fucks this team up. I need to get a spinner on this thing because the two Pokemon that I need to be fast um, are pretty much useless when they're not fast. My uh, my Raikou and my Infernape. But yeah, now he's gonna go ahead and kill me off with another Brave Bird. Figured I didn't really need Weezing at this point. It was worth it to kind of go f uh, Crobat for Weezing. That seems like a pretty fair trade to me. <laughs> as he's gonna go ahead and lead off with his Porygon as we had an empty field here. I decided to go into Real Steel. Seemed like the best choice for me because he doesn't really have much that can hurt it. Plus, I just want to fuck some shit up with a Choice Bander Earthquake. So he gets the download, raises his attack, that is really nice. It's not going to be able to hurt me at all. So he has to switch um, He has to switch into Prismo, which is the Jirachi. And check this out, Jirachi. Thanks for the Choice Band, bitch. Earthquake, yo ass. So that Jirachi, you know, kind of uh, 
kind of failed in this match. I actually got I got to get myself one of them competitive Jirachis. I'm going to have a couple different kinds of sets, so things are really interesting. So now he's going to bring out Paul. He knows that the Choice Bandit Earthquake is not going to do a damn thing to him. And he can go for the Scalds, hope for the burn, and uh, kind of ruin... Ruin my big iron balls day like that. So I decide, you know what? Wildcat can take a Scald. I don't care if I get burned at all. Raikou don't give no shits as this uh, Scald is going to do a little bit of damage and he doesn't get the burn. So I was like, oh, right. My Raikou is a key player in this match because uh, my volts, my specs volt switches just keep on hurting him. Just keep on hurting him. So he's going to go into his Porygon 2 as I believe I actually just stayed in and went for the, uh, the Thunderbolt here. I actually... Let's see, he's going to get his download, which is going to bring him his attack, and he hasn't gotten any special attack raises yet. So, I actually do go for the Thunderbolt there, as I figured I didn't really have much to lose. Anything on his team took a decent amount of damage from a Specs Thunderbolt, um, even if he sent in his Raikou. So, now he's going to go ahead and make the key play of the match, bringing in his Hitmonlee. He's been saving it in the back of his team for a minute here. He's even named Kung Foot 2.0, so that's pretty, that's interesting. Digging it, digging it, bro. Kung Foot would be proud. So, he gets the fake out. It's going to activate his Unburden, and now he's going to be able to outspeed Raikou and kill him with an Earthquake. And this is the part where I was like, shit, I should have saved my Weezing for that Hitmonlee because I didn't even realize how big of a fucking problem this thing was going to be in the long run, but whatever. All I can do now is bring in my Kabutops, who basically um, does, like, no damage with an Aqua Jet. But that was actually a pretty nice play right there. I had to go in and get a little bit of damage off on this Hitmonlee before I can bring in my Registeel. Because I know Registeel can take at least one close combat if this Hitmonlee doesn't feel like getting uh, maximum damage. So he goes for the close combat. I do end up living it, which is perfect. And now I'm able to get a Choice Bandit Earthquake off. And that is going to easily kill the Hitmonlee. So without that Aqua Jet damage... Um, I, you know, I guess I could have either done it, you know, done it both ways. I could have actually gone into Registeel, Earthquaked it, and then been able to kill it with an Aqua Jet. But, you know, Kabutops was a little bit less useful to the team, as, uh, he does still have this Raikou around, so... I am a little bit afraid of this Raikou, as it's kind of threatening. Any Raikou is threatening as fuck. He actually seems to be the same kind of Raikou as me. He's just going to go for the Volt Switch, as that's actually pretty nice for me, because he's going to go ahead and kill my Registeel, and in the process, he's going to have to send out whatever he wants, and then I can base my Switch on uh, whatever he sends in. I believe I have two Pokemon left. I think I have Infernape and Snorlax left. Snorlax hasn't seen the match yet, so he's going to come in here realizing that this Paul can't really do too much to me other than um, Scald me and get a burn. That's kind of my worst my worst fear right there is if he gets the, the, the burn on the Scald, but then I realized I'm not even worried about nothing because he actually goes for the Thunder Wave, and then I realized I actually also have Rest. So I can actually basically sit here, go for as many Curses as I want to, and then um, be able to rest off the the burden of paralysis or whatever the hell I got, and then, uh, you know, be able to just fuck up his team. So, he's just gonna stay in here, keep on going for Scalds, as my defensive, my specially defensive ass Snorlax does not even notice that damage. He's sleeping, probably. He's like, what? Did someone just pour hot water on me? Oh, God. It's so hot. But, at least, uh, since I'm paralyzed, he's not gonna be able to burn me. And I was like, you know, like, I was actually not really too worried about the burn either way, but now he's unable to burn me, so that's actually kind of perfect. So, he actually just now goes for the Ice Beam, realizing his Scalds ain't gonna do shit, but the Ice Beam does even less because I have thick fat. And don't make fun of Tubby about his thick fat. He's very insecure about that shit, but it comes in handy in battle, so I told him it's alright. Um, the audio in the background of this video actually kind of seems a little bit fucked up, but... My 3DS recording device seems to not want to record audio at the same level the whole entire match, so I do apologize about the stupid audio in the background, but basically, I'm just going <laughs> to stay in here, keep on cursing up. Literally, just get as many curses as I feel like I need, and then this slow bro is basically just kind of sitting here realizing he can't do a damn thing, so he's got to switch. He's going to go into his Raikou. His last two Pokemon are the Raikou and the slow bro, so we got two on two right now. Snorlax is looking to have the upper hand here with all his curses. Big fat boy over here gonna body slam your ass, and that would hurt, let me tell you. That Raikou did not enjoy that damage right there at all. That was that was probably just miserable. Fat ass tubby coming landing on your ass. So basically at this point the match is indeed over because this Slowbro is not gonna be able to uh hurt my tubby at, at all. And if it comes down to it, I could just keep on cursing to the point where I get like a two-hit KO on the body slam. I realize that this body slam isn't actually going to be a two-hit KO, which is kind of a bummer, you stupid, stupid Paul. It doesn't look like it after leftovers, at least. But, you know, guys, that was a, you know, that was this was actually probably the first match that uh, Tubby got to show off his skills. Now he's famous. The bitches are all over him. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching, and thank you, Ryan, for the match. I will leave his Twitter link in the description, and uh, be sure to click the thumbs up on this video if you guys enjoyed. It definitely helps out my videos, and uh, thank you guys again. I'll see you guys later.